are back. Welcome to the cavalry. Welcome to the cavalry, folks. We have our, uh, our another guest. We're back with another guest. Yes, if you're watching us on YouTube, you already know that. You already see that. You've already seen his grizzled veteran second baseman sort of fifteenth year in the majors, short growth beard. I like it. And his missing ear. Oh, it can't. Yeah, his ear gets right. cut off by his digital background. Everyone's so, Andy Hendrickson. Everybody, very funny comedian, hey, good mutual yeah, friend right. of ours. How you doing, Thank Andy? Thank you. I'm doing well. It's always, you know what? This is the first podcast I've done on virtual it's, it's actually the first podcast i've ever done so i'm glad you guys uh <laughs> wow <laughs> well welcome to this exciting new medium i'm yeah. excited to be invited to do anything really yeah you were a tough get uh i know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no annie's a really funny comedian we've all worked together i think uh right you and johnny and you and johnny work together i'm sure oh i sure. work with johnny so many years ago at giggles in milwaukee i believe it was uh yep. when he was pretty new what was your buddy yeah you, you had your buddy what was your buddy's tyler name Kroll. tyler Kroll. i always thought he was funny but he never i guess he uh, he got out yeah he he's uh, hilarious he's super hilarious but he just couldn't get behind driving over an hour for fifty dollars so he never <laughs> yeah have you guys ever heard that caroline ray show he made it to he was on the caroline ray show doing stand-up oh how long ago was that it was a long time ago it was the caroline uh, ray show was there uh, was there a caroline ray show i don't remember a caroline ray show that yeah, wasn't like yeah, a i think it was like a day i think it was a daytime show maybe i don't know i just uh, saw the clip i didn't i wasn't a regular watcher Speaking of driving uh, an hour for $50, have you ever heard of the term bucket money in comedy? I always like this term. No, um, I don't think so. Bucket money is, um, you know, in comedy, you do like a crappy gig pretty far away. My buddy called it bucket money. And I was like, uh, well, what, what, what does that mean? He goes, well, you know, if you're a normal person, someone said, hey, I, I drive four hours, I put there's $50 in a bucket on the side of the road. Go get it. And you'd be uh, like, yeah. hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but when you're, if you're a comedian, someone's like, drive four hours for 50 bucks to, to perform. You're like, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I've That's so funny. I've never heard that term. And I've literally had that thought. But mostly doing, I've had that thought always doing colleges because it's more debatable, you know, because like, let's say someone takes like two grand but buries it in a field somewhere in like rural Pennsylvania. Iowa. Yeah. Or something, and yeah, yeah, they're like, you have 48 hours to get this money and you have to get a rental car and a map and fly and all the carbon. And you're like, I don't know to dig up for $2,000. I mean, the yeah. payoff isn't the treasure hunt. The treasure is not that good. I always Pop just called money. it box money. Box money. Yeah. It's the same thing. But if you put the money in a box instead of a bucket, <laughs> Yeah, bucket. I think bucket has a better ring to it. I was more of a Bonnie Hunt show fan myself. Oh, that's where I that's where I was trying to make my stand up debut. But I, Andy. So those these are uh, trying times. How are you doing with the quarantine? How's uh, how's everything going? You're still in L.A. Me and Johnny got out. You know. Yeah, good for you guys. We got out. You know, things are all right. Doing some virtual shows, hanging out a lot of time at home St i started doing p90x3 nine days ago <laughs> Wait, p90x3 i didn't know there was a three yeah three is a half hour a day six days a week and then you get p90x one, you get one. is still is still going yeah a oh, buddy man. of mine did it and i was like it's my birthday coming up in november so i'm like you know what i'm gonna see if i can do it and then like i'll finish it about a week a week before my birthday so i did, that. Uh, I did that in 2010 i did the regular <laughs> the original p90x the problem is it's super exciting you get in it you're committed and then when you're done you're like well shit i'm not doing now that what again. yeah and my brother just, did wow. it he just keeps doing it oh. but i plan to like it's november i plan to just um you know that will be thanksgiving or whatever thanksgiving is this year and then uh yeah i'm gonna 
get lazy again, I think. Yeah, you, you, you've you already planned your peak physically. Yeah. That'll be the strongest you'll be, and then everything after that, you'll slowly be weaker until you die. I'm going to go get a physical the day after I'm finished with P90X. <laughs> so whatever those results are. That's the be, baseline. That's the baseline, and then I can just let it all go to hell. I love it. Nice. Is this a clean podcast? Uh, no, no, not uh, no. no. You can say whatever you want. Were you gonna yeah. say something horrible? No, I'm just you know if I swear or whatever. You're gonna say the f word? <laughs> no. Were you? Come on, say it. I probably say was. It. You can. You can. When we What's upload that? clips to YouTube, we say not for kids. Yeah, there's do? two boxes you can check for kids no. or not for kids. We're decidedly what now you're doing like a ghost thing with your uh, iPhone? you know, I don't know. I'm having fun here. Hey, uh, <laughs> so people can't see that. It so people can't see that. A... We gotta remember people can't see any most people are gonna be listening. Hey listeners. We have to we do remember that. See, we're we're veteran uh, broadcasters yeah. now. But we should have told our guests, yes. That hey, all of the listeners, Andrew's mom and Johnny's mom. And oh, come on. Uh, uh, oh, we invite Andrew, you on our uh, – we, we, we give you this giant platform, and this is how you choose to use it. Yeah. You know, oh, my God. Just teasing Get rid you of them, Andy. Well, uh, you were telling us before we even started that you, you listened to uh, 10 minutes of our first episode <laughs> – then took about 14 weeks off, checked in again with another 10 minutes. So you get the show. You know what we what we do here, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do. what do you need so, backup on? Oh, okay. Well, here's I got two things, but I'll I'll start with the first one, which I think is um, smart. Uh, yeah, that's how you. I'll that's start right. with the second one first. Um, whoa, whoa, hey, yeah, see if yeah, I guess okay. you can tell. Okay. Here's something I need back up on. This is an argument that I have with my wife, Linda, who I love very much. Just let me preface that. She's great, but she comes from a background where when they um, have food, like if you have leftover food or you, you know, you put it in the fridge and she'll let it stay in the fridge until it rots. If, you know, before she oh. throws it out because she's like, I don't want, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. But I come from, I understand you save the food in case you want to eat it later, but there's a tipping point where it's like, okay, now this is just, this is just cluttering up the fridge. It's hidden in the back. It's time to throw it out. And she always gets mad at me for throwing it out. And I want to know if I'm right or what you guys think about that. That's what I want to know, Carl. Well, I'm right. I, I'll, I'll, I think you're right. You can't eat rotten food. But, well, let me ask you a question. This is actually clarifying before I tell you that you're right. But your wife, Linda, would she eat the said food later than you would? Like if you guys had the same thing of like spaghetti in there or whatever. And then would you go, this is rotten? She goes, no, it's not. And she, would she actually eat it? Or it's like a hypothetical, like I might eat that, but she never actually yeah. eats it's more like it goes in there. There's this kind of thing that happens in the fridge where it becomes a void. If it, if it gets out of your oh, yeah. line of the vision, back. then it just becomes a thing that blends into the background. She's like, don't throw that out. It's still good. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not going to be good. It might be still good, but it's probably not going to be good. And it's going to sit there. We're not going to eat it. Right. I know we're not going to eat it because, and so it's just like for me, it's like it's time to throw it out. How often is this a good percentage... subject? Did I pick a bad cowboy? No, 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 no. What, what, what percentage of them? <laughs> we have to get all the details before we get hilarious. Yeah, well, let us ask some what, questions first. But what percentage? Because we really want to back you up. This is not. We don't just hand it out. Okay. Oh, and sometimes uh, we don't even back cheap. each other up. Yeah. It's I not thought you had my earn. back regardless. Like the cow. No, comes, you have to. No, back. I mean. We, we want to. We want to get there. That's you know. the goal. Okay. But so I my question is, say, what? There's, there's no wrong and there's, and, there's, and there's no right as far as my household goes, in case my wonderful wife, Linda, listens to this. This is a point of contention. So uh, let me preface it. And now tell me what you're going to think. <laughs> what are you going to say? 
percentage of food that goes in to the fridge as leftovers gets eaten? I'm going to say it's probably 20%. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, see, that, yeah. That, that puts me on your, you know, that's, that makes it a lot easier to back you up. I was all yeah. ready to back you up, Andy, till you told us till how nervous you seem to get trying to back yourself up with Linda. I don't want to get in trouble either. So if she's listening, oh, I might just take her sign now that you You probably should. <laughs> she, <laughs> you seem, you she, she might seem drive like up you. to Oregon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just no, but here's okay, I can relate to you a little bit because actually my situations, yeah. I'm like you, Andy. I just want to get stuff out of there. I just want it to be like, I want the fridge to be clean. I've like, I want to maximize everything. I want to eat everything. I don't want to waste. But yeah, once it's like, I was like, what is this? I always take up, uh, because my brother-in-law is living here too. So I'm like, there's always like mystery boxes or bags of stuff. I'm like, what is this? Can I throw this away? Can I please throw this away? And then there's like hemming and hawing. But I'm always like quick to do it. So I'm with you. I like get it out of there for the same reason you said, because if there's like, nine times out of 10, nobody's going to eat it. And then it gets gross. And here's the other thing that I deal with. I'm like the only person who will throw it away because my wife has like a fear of rotten food or anything past it. So any leftovers in there, I always have to throw it away because if it's past its prime, she won't touch it. She'll leave it in the fridge for 10 years. She she would never go touch it because she's like, has like a fear of it. A real, a real phobia? I think a real pho- well when it, when can you you can't question someone's phobias you know oh yeah you can oh yeah <laughs> you want to put it <laughs> no, to the test no I was say- drive down to Santa Monica but no I I think it's a pretty real phobia yeah it's a pretty real uh, I mean she won't do it so you know you can you see so what- you can see that Andrew's not worried about his wife hearing this so he's not worried about no. getting in the trouble. chances that listen. Linda might listen Heidi's not gonna listen <laughs> so, I, I the only way like- she's gonna hear it is if she's in the other room furiously <laughs> <laughs> but no uh I would say it's like to me it's like two two to two to three days and maybe three to three to four days, somewhere in there, then it's like, okay, this, this needs to go. Oh yeah. No, I'd it, say 30 it, hours. That's my mark. 30 hours from when you put it in. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, one time in college, I just remembered the story. There was, I lived in a fraternity house, sorry. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, there was pizza that was in a box on top of the radiator that had been sitting in the, like one of the main rooms of the fraternity house for the whole weekend, not refrigerated or anything. And it was like Sunday night and there was no food and I was tired or hungover or whatever it was. And I went down and ate it and everyone was so grossed out because it was like three day old pizza that hadn't been refrigerated. And I'm still here to talk about it. So, Wait, yeah. So whose side are you? Are you? Not <laughs> I don't know. But I just what was that, that supposed was to way. illustrate? I think Nothing, you just further. Just that I'm gross. That I used you're to really, be gross. You're really trying to paint a picture here. You come on. You're complaining about your wife. You're doing no, P90X. About my wife. You're doing I'm P90X. About the you are a frat guy. You're really trying to tell us a story. <laughs> <laughs> he has an yeah. agenda here. <laughs> no. I. Okay. So I think I think I'm gonna back you up in that. No one's ever, if it ever gets to the point where it's debatable whether or not to throw something away, you should just throw it away because no one's ever going to go, oh, I wish I had that three-day-old pod Thai, you know, just, you guys aren't, like, destitute, you know, you can order more Thai food. It's not like you said pod Thai, like Tide Pod backwards, pod Thai. No, what is, I said pod Thai, not Tide yeah. Pod. You said it like you see official, more like the... more frat guy behavior. You're thinking about <laughs> tide, eating tide pods. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't end um, with you. So I don't know. I feel like that was a lame subject, but would Johnny she, didn't really chip in. I would she kind of sat there? <laughs> would she? I'm staring at a box of dots that I can't wait to eat. I don't want to eat them on the air, so I'm just going to eat them when we're done. Uh, so I'm patiently waiting. Anyway, uh, but would she be opposed to where you date it 
do you date? You don't date. You don't date it. Put a post-it on it. Okay, this went in here on August eighteenth at no. five p.m. Yeah. Uh, she wouldn't be opposed time. to it, but I don't think either of us would uh, have the, the. That would be a great invention, though, is if like takeout containers came with like a digital countdown clock, and every time you like a bomb or something, and then you just started the counter the second you come out of the restaurant. You know, or, it's like or a running. The, the moment you seal it, the timer goes off. Like it, right. it knows once it's been sealed, it goes, "Hey, that could work." Shark that tank. That could work. That's smart. Shark tank. Andy, Shark Tank. Andy's a you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial I, spirit kind of guy, right? I do. I do have. You're always talking about how to make a billion dollars. That's right, and I still haven't done it. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, this is, oh, this is it. On the burner. This is the idea. Yes, and now's the time yeah. to capitalize. Everyone's doing takeout right now, you know, because of the COVID. I do wonder if there is a way I, you know, I had an idea for uh, an emoji app way back when emojis were just like super basic. They didn't have any of the fancy ones on the iPhone or anything. And I was like, there's got to be a way to make funny emojis. And of course that took off too. So that, that would have been, a, that would have been a good one if I would have. I literally bought a book on how to like create an app and how to market it and all this stuff. Yeah. And but that's the, that's and the reason why that's the real difference. It's like, this is so true with anything in life, but the real difference between like idea people and the people who get rich are just the ones who actually go and do it. That's like 99.9% .9 of it is like the person who's actually willing to go like raise some money, put it into this thing. You know what I mean? People have like ideas all the time. My wife had my wife had an idea for like because we moved a lot, and she was like, "I'm going to invent this, and this is going to what we're going to do. We're going to invent this. It's a box so that you're hanging clothes. You don't have to put them in." And they actually had that invention at the time of when she thought of it. We just <laughs> never did that. We just always put them in bags and threw them in the car. But they have wardrobe boxes. So that's so, that's so funny that even the thing. She's like, this would be so great. They need to invent this. It's like someone and still, did, and you guys still have never used it. <laughs> so how great an idea really is it? Yeah. We actually have one in our closet right now. Yeah, and, we don't oh, like it. Yeah, but we don't like it. Who, 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 yeah, we don't who like invented this annoying. piece of crap? Poor shit. <laughs> Hard to get rid of. Oh, boy. No, that was a good one, Andy. That was a good Do start. Do you feel supported? Do you feel supported? You feel, we, are, we are with yeah. you. Well, yeah. I'd say what it's come down to now is that to avoid, you know, we can laugh. We laugh about it now, but it was a little thing that we would have small arguments and, but to avoid any problems, I just don't throw anything out unless I ask her. I used to just go in there and be like, this is done. And then she'll come like four hours later, she comes back from wherever. And she's like, did you throw out the whatever? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I thought it was bad. Ah, and then that's how it gets started. Oh, you know? well, that is pretty aggressive. How long would you wait until you would do that? Like, how I feel like I am the frat man of the <laughs> well, house. Well, now you just revealed like that. You didn't tell that part of the story. You're the frat man. No, the frat man. You know, I was gonna say I'm, I was gonna say something <laughs> like very old school fratty. I'm the man of the house. I can oh. decide when to throw out. The oh, <laughs> that's not. Yeah, I was just being kidding. I was kidding. Um. Yeah, I, I throw it out without asking because if it's been in there long enough, I'm like, it's no. Know. But I mean, but give me a specific like, how long would something have to be in there where you would unilaterally toss it out? I mean, that is pretty aggressive. You know, four days, something around there. Four days. Yeah, that's borderline. That's borderline. I'm still gonna. I'm not gonna rescind my uh, support, but uh, that's that's yeah really tough. I'm clearly supporting since my cutoff was 30 hours. Yeah, Johnny was at yeah. 30 hours. He's throwing everything away. Well, you you have kids. I mean, I would think that you would hold on to all the scraps so you could just kind of like give them whatever table scraps. Oh, oh, our, you yeah, ours what is, do you feed kids? You, ours is like full of little... shit. I don't practice what I preach. I'm saying I wish <laughs> we, I want to throw it out after the, well, we got age old shit in there. Well, I was going to say, you guys, you probably don't have that many leftovers, right? Don't your kids probably just eat everything? No, we do, but like, uh the baby you know she can't say no she just gets what she gets so like the leftovers are great to give to her because she can't be picky yet 
Just stale, put them in a blender. Stale, not even moldy. Here's food. some. Here's some pad Thai, Phoebe. <laughs> I, I will say we bought a. We got, it's five uh, stars, so I hope you. <laughs> yeah. I hope you're. They'll clear your sinuses for you. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, it's not pad Thai. According to Andrew, it's pod Thai. Pod. Oh, I don't even know what it is. I just heard him say that hey, word. I, I lived in Thai Town in L.A. for like. Uh, Oh, did years. you? So I'm the authority on this subject. Yeah. I, I will say this. Uh, we bought a giant bag of like Costco pretzels at the beginning of the pandemic, which, you know, survival food. And yeah. I mean, it's huge. And that was in probably early April, and it's still in our cupboard. It's huge. And every once in a while, we'll go in there. And the pretzels still stay fresh, and I don't understand. Well, they're pretzels. Uh, they're not pad thai. Yeah. This but is like that pizza story. Like, I don't know if this is illuminating <laughs> anything. Do, do pretzels last for like three months? <laughs> yeah. Once the bag is open? Well, they're already like stale. That's like the whole idea to them. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's like our cereal. When the Cheerios go bad, we just give them to Phoebe because she can't yeah. be like, hey, these suck. These are hard. She just thinks, yeah. oh, I guess all food is hard now. <laughs> That's what food is. Yeah. Um, well, okay. You're the host, so you asked the next question because I got all sorts of stuff I want to talk about. But uh, Okay, well, we'll, we'll come back. We'll, maybe we'll go in a circle here. And then we'll we'll make sure we get back to you. Me and Johnny might just do one for the sake of time, but then we'll we'll get back to you, uh, and you can bring up more concerns. Yeah. So you want to yeah, just watch on. how, and then we'll show you how it's done. I wanted to talk about the. Uh, well, I'm sure you guys are planning to bring it up, but so I don't want to. I don't want to like do something that's not the video that Johnny sent me. Oh yeah. So I sent him. I sent him the video. Oh, let's just, just in talk case about that. All right, oh, that's a, yeah. This, so this is mine. This is mine. And we, so Andrew, you can put the video in the YouTube when you put it together, if you want, or and you yeah. can even put it on the audio. Okay. So there, I have a little video. It's one minute long because I, this was my first live show. It was at an outdoor venue and it was close. It was like two hour, two and a half hours away. So I thought, okay, this is you know that's worth it to go and it'll be you know safe, whatever. I'll get home. And uh, so the morning of, I was like, oh, I'll bring my son. He's never seen me. It's a restaurant, so it's kid friendly. So he'll come. We went and did, you know, played like on the lake during the day in the place. And then, uh, and then went to the show. And it was, it, I had this show on such a pedestal because I was like, oh, it's a live show. I can't wait to get up there and be on stage and just be in front of an audience. Oh, yeah. Just completely my mind shutting out blocking out 80 percent of audiences on these one-nighter garbage gigs and it was atrocious it was terrible they're like booing they're not listening there's a table having a party and so i cut together like a one minute video and it starts out all pretty like you know it has a picture of my son watching me and it's like my son got to see me do stand up for the first time so exciting and then it just cuts to you suck Oh, dude. It's just My a favorite. montage of all this trash. And so I, so I put that and I thought it was hilarious. And then at the end, it's, you know, some guy yelling, hey, it's a hoax. Because I made fun of him. I was like, you know, this guy doesn't want to get germs because he thinks it's a hoax. He goes, it is a hoax. And it just <laughs> says, so comedy's crazy. back, baby. <laughs> and uh, so I thought it was funny. I was like, oh, I'll post, I'll post that. That's funny. And my wife was like, I don't, I don't know if you want to post. I, I don't, you know, I don't think you should post a video of, you know you, people saying you suck and not listening and i was like yeah but anyone knows like that's just and she was like eh, I, I don't want i don't want my friends to see you you know getting <laughs> yell at you sucks i was like all right whatever i'll just text it to people that i think would think it was funny so, well, wait, so what's your guys it so you think it's, i should it post it i thought i as a comedian i I enjoyed watching it. It made me right. shudder. Like I texted you, it brought back some old bad show memories. Right. But it, it that's such, I think I would love, you know, I think the comics will like it if you share it. But, but um, that's what I mean. Like there's no way to isolate like here, this is for my comic friends. 
people that might be hiring me for a show, please don't watch this because you don't understand. Right. This is not, you know, this is not my fault. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's so funny. And the way you've, you've uh, edited it together is so great. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's, what's so funny that you bring that up because my wife and I had a discussion about, because when you sent it to me, we were driving and I, I was in the passenger seat. She was driving and I watched it and I was just howling, laughing. And she, so I explained to her what it was and, and I let the audio play for her stuff and she laughed, but then she thought it was cool that you like brought your son to see you. And then I was just like, Oh my God, can you imagine the first time your kid sees it? And she's like, well, no, because then they can see there's all sorts of types of people in the world. Not everybody's I'm like, yeah, but there's like other ways to show. Yeah. That's not a good introduction. Fabric of this country than just showing them the absolute dog shit. Like this is who, <laughs> this is who daddy performs for. These morons yeah. are the only ones who will pay to see daddy, you know? And me and so, my son were the only two people in mass. There was one waitress, but no one else. I noticed that. I noticed that. And the guy who said it's a hoax, he had the thick Wisconsin. It's a hoax. Yeah. 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 I did uh, a show oh, back too, and it was the same thing. I did, uh, the, the first show I did back was awful. And you think, you just think there's going to be this pent up excitement because people mm-hmm. haven't been going out and they can't wait to see live entertainment. And it's just immediately back to the same shit. <laughs> yeah. Was there was no recognition that, because yeah. most of these people, you realize they didn't even, they, nothing happened to them. They didn't change their life one iota. Yeah. That's yeah. the first, the first thing I thought of when I watched that video was it, it's how stand up comedy will. It, there, it, you're always there's a beat down around the corner like you, you just never know and, and like it's amazing how much we forget to not be like you were saying johnny like to not be aware of all of those things that could go wrong you right. just get in this mood like it's gonna be fun i got these new jokes and you get excited for it and you show up oh yeah the new jokes there, or, the new the new yeah. covid jokes that you think you wrote on your virtual shows and you think and they're like oh these do, these are killing on these yeah. zoom shows and then you bring those dust those off in your act and you're like oh jesus Christ. yeah my <laughs> first weird. reference my first reference to what's going on and i met with we don't wear masks around here <laughs> oh okay well we're clearly not even on the same let me just ditch right. all those and go on autopilot <laughs> oh yeah. man we're in trouble. <laughs> no, but I, I, yeah, we're, this it won't be ending anytime soon. But I think uh, I'm I'm with you, Johnny. I think you should post it. Show show a mirror to society. Be like, this is who you animals are. Look at yourself. Yes. Because also, even if they're not the people, you know, there's people who will watch that and like, oh, who would behave like that at a show? But even the people who think that they're better than those people at that audience, maybe they wear masks, whatever. But they're still doing fireball shots in the middle of the performance and yeah. sitting with their backs to the stage to start the show. I mean, there's still all that behavior, even at some of the good shows, you know. So it'd be good for everyone to see th- their awfulness. My, my favorite part was, was when it took me, you know, 35 seconds to get their attention so they even knew I was talking to them from the <laughs> stage on a mic. And this lady, and she's like, oh, we're doing fireballs. Were we loud? Are you yeah. kidding me? I couldn't get your attention over yeah. you. I, I I don't think I see comics show bombs and dealing with hecklers and stuff all the time. And uh, I also I've done a couple, you know, Q and A's after shows, especially on some of these virtual shows or whatever. Some of these gigs I've done where they sit down and we'll do a panel thing. That's the first thing people want to know. What was your worst bomb? Mm-hmm. You know. And yeah. so I think it's worth sharing. Oh, and then the added, uh, this gets to be your worst bomb, I think, right? Because it's your son's first time seeing you do comedy. That adds a whole new uh, wrinkle to it. That's pretty yeah. great. How old's your son? Six. Oh, yeah, he'll remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Respect level dropped. What does your dad do? Ah, he tries to do stand-up. Yeah, but you can always show him your TV stuff, and then he'll be like, oh, dad's on TV. Well, but I always – it's funny because uh, I've talked about this before, but, like, 
when you when you first start dating someone your instinct is to hold off and be like oh don't come to this show you know come to this show i got this show in two weeks that's the show to come to because you think oh i want to make sure they come to like the best show right but the reality is you want them to come to like a pretty good show so that you can escalate along the relationship better and better shows like you don't want to bring them to an awful show but you want to bring them one where like yeah that was pretty good and then the next one's better than that because I've made the mistake for where I bring someone I'm dating to like the best show I've ever done. And then like the next one, they're like, Oh, and I'm like, well, oh. this show's pretty good. You know what I mean? This Something is what you do. Right. I did that when I was in New York, I was dating this girl. She hadn't seen me do stand up, and you know, I was making a living at it, but I, I didn't have any good credits or anything. And, uh, I did a show that was upstairs at this bar restaurant and the, the guy who had booked it, he usually books really good things and promotes them really well. I'd never done it before. And he was like, this one's going to be great. We're charging, you know, this amount for tickets. And I was like, okay, this would be awesome. So I said, why don't you meet me here? And the family of four that were tourists in New York bought tickets. No one else came. There wasn't even really a stage area. I basically, with a microphone, was talking to a family of four, two, two like teenagers and two parents, <laughs> and just like, so, what are you, where are you guys from? And that's that's she just started dating me, and she showed up, and she's like, oh, okay, that's what this is what you do. First impressions, yeah. it's know. tough, but nowhere to go from up. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, so for you, Andy, or or Johnny, for you with your son, now the next time your son sees you, you know, the show presumably will be better. You know, you'd hope. And then he'll go, oh, man, daddy's getting good at this. Yeah, he's really <laughs> come a long way. No one hurled anything at daddy. <laughs> this was a good show. Yeah. You know, my, my first date with Linda, my wife, was I did a show at a comic book shop in Santa Monica. And I didn't know how it was going to go, but I was busy at the time, traveling a lot. So I was, I was like, hey, do you just want to meet me here? Thank God it was a good show. But uh, I remember when I showed up, she, she got there before me. She was sitting up front by herself. And I was like, hey, I like that girl. You know, because most girls would kind of like be shy and hide out in the background and wait for yeah. me to show up. But she was just like enjoying it, the whole thing. So, and you just nice. think if you hadn't have done good, you might be throwing out somebody else's food right now. That's true. It's yeah, or it's probably my own food. Yeah. <laughs> In my little uh, tiny studio. Okay, well, Johnny, I think Andy and I are on the same page here. We both think you should post it. And I will. I'll, I'll make sure we get it into this podcast somehow, too. So. Don't worry about it. Hey, you suck. Yeah. I did not see this. I did. I need you to come. What are we, it's a timeout everybody. What are we celebrating over here, big table? Hey guys, what are we celebrating? They don't even know there's a show going on, okay. Hey, loud lady, loud lady. Loud lady. Oh my goodness. What are we celebrating? I just want to get in on this party. Card so we don't have to get each other's germs, even though that guy said it's a hoax. Okay? It is a hoax. It is a hoax. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go really quick and then we'll come back to Andy since we're going to run low on time here. But because I want to make sure you get your other one out. But mine's so mine's really fast. But and I bring this up every episode because it's kind of like the big thing going on in my life. but me and my wife were having a baby. My wife is pregnant. She's like six months pregnant now. And uh, I was excited originally for a lot of things to have a baby, but like down the list, uh, one of those things was like, we we're finally going to have the same appetite. Like we could eat it's like now that she eats a lot more food. I've, I'm thinking like, cause I eat a lot and then like, and I eat fast. I'm like, okay, now I won't look like a big fat pig when we go out to eat or like, when we order food, it's like, oh, yeah, let's go on chicken wings, whatever. Yeah. But what's happening is her appetite's not, I don't know, if, this is like a trope from 
pregnancy movie from movies or TV shows or whatever. But she doesn't have. She's not eat crushing like large pizzas every night. Like she doesn't. Her Pickles. appetite is not much larger than it normally was. I mean, you know. So it's it's kind of disappointing to me because now I've had this experience where I've had to like, are you going to finish that to my pregnant wife? <laughs> and then uh, you feel like this enormous shame and judgment. But it's like, I just, I, I don't really even know what I need backup. I basically need backup on the fact that is it okay for me to finish stuff off my wife's plate when she's the one that's pregnant? Oh, that's socially acceptable. Yeah, With her yes. permission. Yeah. 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 With her oh, permission. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I, I think uh, that's totally fine, but if she doesn't eat enough, when the baby comes out, it's going to be very hungry. So that's the problem. And it's then gonna be your fault. I think she's, she eats, a, she eats enough. She gets full. Like she always says, Oh, I'm so full. And then she, that, you know, it's like, Oh, I'm so full. And it's like, okay, take it easy. You didn't, <laughs> I'm the one that finished <laughs> half your ravioli. Okay. So mm. let's not talk about how so full you're. Cause I'm like, Oh, could we go for ice cream? You know? <laughs> so I don't <laughs> want you talking about how full we are, you know? I always pay attention to what my uh, like wife, like if we're ordering out, we're the, I'm like, oh, you're going to get fish tacos? Good. Because I know that I'm going to at least you get yeah, <laughs> like a half oh, a yeah. or something. <laughs> it totally affects my order if I know, like sometimes I'm getting? hesitant to get something if it doesn't have like fries, like I'll be in the mood, you know, I was like, ah, oh, man, I want this, like this gumbo or something. That looks good, but it doesn't come with fries, man. Fries sound pretty good. But then she'll order like a chicken sandwich. Like, oh, that does come with fries. <laughs> that frees me up to order the gumbo. Cause I know I'm going to get a lot of fries from yeah. this pregnant lady's plate. We're pigs. I wish yeah. I had that problem. My wife orders disgusting, gross, healthy shit that I know I'll oh. never want. Oh yeah. And she tries she tries to share like give me a bite of yours and all and i'm like I, I didn't order that i ordered this i don't want that and i don't want to share this i like that so. bit you have about the uh the soap with the sticks in it <laughs> it's all true it's all true yeah. yeah she's a she's a weirdo but i did when she was pregnant i did i mean just like you but it was like in the movies where she it wasn't like gross you know oh i want pickles with mustard on them but it was like yeah I kind of want McDonald's and I, yeah, right and in I the beginning. leaned in baby. And it was yeah. nice. right in the beginning. She, when she had like the morning sickness, McDonald's was actually one of the things. And I was like, man, we hadn't been to McDonald's in like, I don't know, 10 years or something. But then, so I was like, that's actually kind of fun. But then do they that, not have that McDonald's did not where you live or why would you go 10 years <laughs> without McDonald's? I don't, I'm like, I'm more of a Wendy's guy. <laughs> okay. Andy, when's the last time you went to McDonald's? Probably uh, last week. Oh, there's geez. one. There's one literally a, a block of my house, so I can. It's like sometimes when there's nothing to eat, I'm like, I'm just gonna go to McDonald's. Oh, all right. I, I but I, when I lived in New York, there was a Burger King literally like not even like a half block, and I made a point to not eat there. And uh, but now I don't know. I'm oh I don't care anymore. You're on the PNX. I gave up. It's pandemic. Have you yeah. guys, did you guys ever work uh, Zanies in, it was like in a resort, St. Charles Zanies? No. Because there's a no. Portillo's. Who, book, who books that? It, it's Bert. <laughs> there's a Portillo's. You guys have had Portillo's, right, in Chicago? Yeah, the hot dog. Yeah, yeah, and they also have beef and cheddar. Uh, but anyways, there's a Portillo's across the street, or across the parking lot from this Zanies and I one day I had it <laughs> three times in the same day. Yes. Yeah. Did you go That's hot dog a... every time or did you at least No, here's different... what I do. I do the beef and cheddar, cheese yeah. fries, and a chili cheese dog with a vanilla shake. And that, that yeah. order three times? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Cause that's the food pyramid. So you want to make sure you, you didn't want Dairy. just the hot dog. You had to have right. the whole, you want to get all the nutrients. I was, I was younger. It was a different time. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine if your wife makes all healthy stuff that when you'd go on the road, you'd be like, Oh, well, well, that's the thing is I've lost literally like over 25 pounds since the pandemic. And it's because I don't eat fast food. 
Like I'm not making yeah. a conscious effort. I just can't eat fast food because I have to lie. I had McDonald's today for breakfast because she took. We had a pick. We went camping. Why are you a, whispering? There's no. Yeah, yeah she's whispering upstairs. on a she's podcast. Upstairs. She's either listening or not. <laughs> she's, 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 no, she's upstairs. But <laughs> I had to go pick up the dog. We had the dog being boarded, and I was like, "Ooh, I could really quickly go to McDonald's, and no one would know." So I did. <laughs> wow. I'm going to text exciting. your wife. Please don't. <laughs> okay, Andy. Andy, last last chance here uh, before we wrap up. Give us one more you need backup on. Uh, I don't know if this one's as good or whatever, but um, so I had a uh, – I went to the dermatologist two years ago because I had this red dot on my forehead, and I thought it might be some kind of – cancer thing right like when i was a kid my mom we i lived in hawaii and california and my mom would just put like zinc on her nose and just go play we'd be out in the sun for like 10 hours a day it was just we didn't just didn't know any better and um anyway this i went to this doctor two years ago in la and he was like nah i don't really see anything i had him like look at my whole scan my whole body i'm like well what about this is what i'm nah it looks fine to me but you know what, if you want, uh, if you want to get rid of that dark spot, if you want to like, we can do Botox and like, that's so LA that I'm trying to get a cancer screening and he's like offering me beauty, like, right. you know, the, where he'll make money. Right. Right. So you I should have framed it to him in a way that was like, yeah, I'm looking to get this, uh, cleaned up. You know, it's yeah, just, you- I, I'm worried about, I'm getting headshots next week. It'd be nice to get this cancer <laughs> removed. Yeah, I wanted to show. Up. I don't want them to have to do it in post. So, so I went back just recently. Like I don't know. I got it, and I got a message from. I went and saw. They actually scheduled me with the exact same dermatologist, my insurance company, or my health insurance. And so I called and switched doctors, and she, this one was great. And she goes, "Oh yeah." She looked at the exact same spot that had been there for an extra two years now. She's like, "Oh, that's a basal cell for sure." And then she just called me today and she goes, yeah, it's a basic, uh, we'll, ha- we'll have to do some kind of, you know, it's nothing serious, but it's like precancerous. We'll have it removed or whatever. And my question is, I'm so, I don't want to swear. I'm so fucking annoyed that this doctor was so just cavalier and like then offered me beauty tips, you know, do I narc out this doctor or com- file some kind of complaint or do I just let it go? Oh yeah. Cuz I just No. I, I see, don't I, I, be like my, a... my vote is that you do, but if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't just out of laziness, but anytime it's yeah. someone else narking, I want yeah, cuz I want to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I'm not one of those people who normally complain, but just the way he handled the whole thing, I just thought maybe I should just do a here we do. I could do a um passive aggressive. I can go on like what are the like I don't know what it's called, like Zoc Doc or something. No, like man. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, hit them on Yelp. I think the, all yeah. these doctors are on Yelp now. Just do do like a savage Yelp. Like my cancer was literally staring him in the face. Like it could not be. It was Rudolph yeah. the Red Nose Reindeer. Like what was it? What? And I pointed to it, and the guy was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But man, you're these arms are jiggling, huh? What? Do we, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You want to do uh, you want some breast implants? What do you, uh, so anyway, like, that was my other one. No, that's great. I think you should, I think you should do all the yeah, tweet, take tweet them, it. Take, take them as far as you want to go. It's a pandemic. What else do you got to do too? You got nothing but time, but then also, uh, I like to like, you know, the healthcare industry makes money off of all this stuff. They make money off of cancer too. And, and removing, T cells or whatever, you know, it's like you don't T-cells. just have to make or no, what is it? What are they removing off of you? I don't have HIV. Oh, well, that's good. Are you sure? <laughs> no, <laughs> I have to get doctors. checked on that. <laughs> yeah. No, but I don't get it. Like, is he only able to make money off of cosmetic stuff? Like, what's the end game for him? The, yeah, the cosmetic stuff was that's not part of the insurance plan i'm pretty sure oh i see i see i see i see so i actually looked him up recently before i went the second time two years later and most people were complimentary but it was most of the stuff that they were complimenting was all cosmetic you know it's la so everyone's like 
Oh yeah, he's so great. Uh, <laughs> like, I've got three weeks to live, but I've never looked better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not the one to complain. I just feel like people should be held accountable, and uh, the way he—if you guys were there, you'd be pissed too. It was just so. Oh lame. yeah, no, that's crazy. Taking uh, liberties with your health. You know, they have they do the uh, oath. Yeah, the Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. So they got to yeah, take them down a peg. Them. I wonder if anyone la is going to laugh at any of the stuff we said today. Oh, they do. They, they do. Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> it, 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 it's a real problem. I please think wear, the, please wear the your Johnny mask. Beaner video is going to be a hit. The one that he, that he has to put out now because he talked about it. Yeah, I talked I've about never it. laughed so hard in my life. Oh, when you, you know. That part you're describing, though, because it's, it's so good. And if people have listened or watched to it, watched it now, they know. But when you're like selling your merch, were you selling merch, by the way? Is that what you were doing? And you're talking yeah, about like I was a like, hey, if you want to buy, if you want to buy the shirt, contactless, so we don't have to get each other's germs, except for the guy that says a hoax. It is a hoax. <laughs> well, that's the part that I admire, Johnny, is that you went up. It was a horrible, tough show. Everyone was spread out. It was hard to get laughs. Just one of those bad, bad nights. And then afterwards, you're like, who wants a shirt? One guy bought I'm impressed. eight. Really? One guy Whoa. bought eight. He was loaded. Oh, I'll send you a video. There was a guy, one of the guys was, I went in, my son had to go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, God. So I took him inside. One of the guys was, he, he had his head against the wall. He was peeing at the urinal, head against the wall, snoring. <laughs> I'll send you that video. We can include that, too. Is he yeah, the guy who bought the eight shirts? No, it was a different guy. Uh, Dude, that's one you should post. That'll that'll be entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I, well, that's I, yeah, a good lesson. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, go ahead. It, it was it was the perfect beginning because it was like not only is it you suck, and then this other lady that I've been going back and forth with was like, I didn't say that, and then the guy goes, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Proudly. Yeah. But no, what a great lesson, right? Like you, adversity, things aren't going your way. But you know what? I'm selling these shirts. You know what I mean? Right. And then, well, yeah. look what happens. One dude buys eight, makes your whole, makes your whole nut right there. Little box you, money. Little box money. Stop on thing. the way home and get McDonald's. Yeah, there you go. And throw it in the Tying fridge. It all together. Put it in the fridge. Yep. This is like a Seinfeld episode. We just tied all the pieces <laughs> together right at the end. Just an explosion of mediocre callbacks yep. right at the yep. end. <laughs> A couple Fire of horned shot. references here. Oh, there goes the sparkler. There goes the snake. And now it's over. But thank you, Andy. Man, we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. We're being too self-deprecating because this was actually really fun. And uh, Yeah, it was fun. It. it was really fun. Yeah. Good to catch up with you guys. Yeah. You look good. The P90X is working. Really, uh, you think you can't see anything, right? No, know. but I mean your I face. Your face. Oh, oh, hello. He's flexing Whoa. on us, everybody. Damn, there's, yeah. there's the frat boy we were talking frat. about. Frat boy. Frat That's man. T cells. My, <laughs> I got to check my T cells. You got me nervous now. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Man, maybe that's a problem. Maybe this wasn't even a doctor. You're just trusting anybody. You don't see on the well, I have been uh, considered to be a bit of a hypochondriac in my time, but I was right on this one. Yeah. You were right, and uh, they're going to fix you up, though. I'm not worried, you know? Yeah, I'm not go. worried. All right, man. So you feel backed right, up. Guys. We go, we, I think we backed you up twice. Uh, I know I'm behind you on both those, and uh, give that doctor hell. Thanks for All coming right. on the cavalry. Remember, you got anything you want to plug? Any shows in the? Oh months? yeah, nothing. Website? <laughs> no, your documentary. Uh, oh yeah, yeah that, that's still in the works. Still in the works. I can hey, see you guys um, a video. Uh, I that did. We just I, finished. I did donate to that, and I I know this is awkward, but we're kind of in tight times. You yeah. don't have to give me the digital copy when it comes out if I get. If I can just get that back. <laughs> get the money back? Yeah. I can do that for you. I can All do right, that good. for you. Thank I'll, you. I'll, Whatever. I'll Johnny, Johnny sold eight shirts. He should send us money. That's true. Johnny's rich now. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, buddy. 
All right. Well, go. You know, if you ever get a chance, go see Andy uh, do stand up. Yeah. Funny. Oh, yeah. So my website's just andyhendrickson.com. And um, all my albums are, if you go into iTunes, all my comedy albums are on there. Pandora and all, Spotify, all that stuff. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just stream it for free. You don't have to buy it. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to buy it. Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for coming. And thanks for listening. And leave a comment and review if you want us to back you up on stuff in your life. That's it. Hey.